Thank you guys for logging in. Exciting to see all you guys. What I want you to see first is this is our Facebook group. It's called the Real Estate Agent Roundtable. If you are not a member of it, please join it as soon as humanly possible. It's a Facebook group that we run and we operate. It's where everyone, you know, kind of networks together, asks questions together, mastermind and roundtable topics together. We post a lot of information here. We give you guys a lot of tools. Here's um, our head coach at ICC, Eisenhower Coaching and Consulting, doing a Facebook Live today where he's communicating with quite a few people. This webinar, marketing it in here. So it's probably where a lot of you come from. People looking for referrals, you can see here. A lot of referrals being sent around the country in this group as well too. Here's one that was in Arkansas today. Um, little tools that we provide in here, like graphs you can show with agents you work with things things you can learn. Quite a few videos that we post in here as well too. Checking out different products that you guys use. Um, here's someone asking about a different product, a company that they might hire to be an inside sales agent company. So they'll share that and people will comment on that. Different webinars we feature and we offer to you guys. Again, my mug in here doing a lot of vid videos, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, that's what we do in the group. So if you haven't, please join in there. Uh, please join that group. And one of the things you want to do is you want to interact with some of those posts. If you guys don't know, Facebook has an algorithm and Facebook chooses what posts that it wants you to see. Okay. Cause you may have 5,000 friends, but you notice you always see the same friends every time, or you be maybe members of 30 different groups, but you aren't seeing posts from another group. If you want to see posts from a particular group or from a particular person, all you have to do is tell Facebook you like posts from that person or group. And the way that you tell Facebook that is you like the post or comment on the post. Then Facebook goes, oh yeah, okay, I'll show you more of those. So make sure you interact with a couple posts at least every now and then from the Facebook group and they'll show up right in your newsfeed. So it's super convenient, you know, Facebook's, you, you can teach, train Facebook, you know, it's very, it's very, very teachable product. So um, and that way you can stay in the loop and you, and you keep staying very relevant in your business. Okay. That's number one. Number two, we have our real estate co conference coming up. It's called the ICC Invitational. It's a real estate conference in uh, Isla Morada, Florida. Um, it's going to be cool. Um, you can go to ICC Invitational uh, 2022. The link's also in the chat room for that as well, too. We're going to be doing a lot of networking, a lot of masterminding. Um, we do the summit in October on the West Coast. And on the East Coast, we're going to be doing the ICC Invitational, where we talk about all the, you know, the different concepts of growing your business, leveraging your business, building a real estate team, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to mix that in with a golf tournament, a sport fishing tournament, hiking. We're staying at the Islander Resort, which is this beautiful, exclusive resort that we are pretty much dominating with just our conference. It's in the Florida Keys and Isla Mirada. So something if you're interested in, check that out as well, too. So love to see you again. You can click on that link as well uh, up above um, for those of you just logging in. Um, and then as well, what we're going to be talking about today is some of the core concepts in my latest book that just came out about 30 days ago. And I'm really proud to say for most of that time, we have been ranked as the number one top selling real estate book in real estate sales for the past, I think, five weeks since it's been out. Um, and it's called The High-Performing Real Estate Team. And we're going to talk about some of those concepts uh, in this webinar. Um, but you can buy it on audiobook. You can buy it in paperback, Kindle, whatever. The audiobook just came out. Like, Apparently, you have to wait on that a little bit until it sells a certain amount of copies in paperback. I don't know. So I'm not, that's not my department. I just help write the book. But anyway, the audiobook is now out. You can buy it on Audible or anything else as well, too. It is the most comprehensive book on real estate teams by far, bar none in the history of mankind. Um, it is a, I mean, if you're going to read that cover to cover, it is going to take you some time because it is jam packed with information, a lot of which we're going to talk about today in this webinar as well. But this is it. It's the high performing real estate team. You want to pick it up on Amazon, click in the link in the chat room, and you can do that. Um, again, it is, it has been the top selling book on real estate teams for a very long time. Lastly, for all you guys on this, on this webinar, if you guys are interested in this, it is totally free and there's absolutely no obligation, but you can actually get a free coaching call, a free coaching call with an ICC coach. 
you know, people have always thought about how do I get into coaching? Oh my gosh, coaching's too expensive or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I mean, get a free call, get, pick up the phone and, you know, they can analyze your business pretty quickly and give you some steps in the right direction. That way you can learn about coaching and maybe you like it. Maybe you sign up, maybe you sign up 10 years from now, who knows? That's why we do it. You're not going to get hard pressured into anything. It is super, super easy to sign up for it. That is something that every webinar, every member of this webinar is going to get for free. These, um, so I would take advantage of that if you've not coached with us. The book that I just showed you called The High Performing Real Estate Team, one of Amazon's best-selling books, uh, number one in real estate sales, um, goes into five key components of a high-functioning real estate team. Now, the book talks about a whole bunch of different components like number one, creating a viral goal. Number two, creating activity-based indicators, uh, which are key performance indicators. Those things you do to, to, and the members of your team will all each do to generate and grow their business. And then you are going to, then in addition to that, we're going to typically hold each other accountable on a dashboard or scoreboard for the team where we can visually see what everyone's supposed to be doing to grow and move forward. And then we're going to meet regularly about that um, and huddle up together in a weekly or monthly or daily or whatever team meeting. And we're going to drive those activity-based indicators forward towards our goal, right? And that's a kind of a quick overview. Now, the book goes into how to structure teams, different ways to, to uh, different types of ways to lead generate for business on teams. And all this stuff works for solo agents as well, too, in different various degrees. Why, you know, you learn about different leadership techniques, rules and structures and, and benchmarks for teams, how to hold team meetings, how to set up business plans, you name it, how to build a dashboard for your team, all those types of things we talk about. Okay. So I'm going to show you kind of a clunky version of what a real estate team's dashboard might look like. And I'm going to point out a section of the dashboard that will surprise a lot of you. And it will generate questions from a lot of you. It will, uh, to me, it'll be something that most of you learned today about real estate teams. Um, the section that I'm going to show you, and I'm, I'm kind of holding that back here, um, because first I want to show you my old clunky dashboard. And when I say my old clunky dashboard, I mean, it is literally an old clunky dashboard. I, I'm, I'm old. I'm not a young um person. So because of the fact I'm not a young person, I love Microsoft Excel. Now, a lot of the teams we coach at ICC are some of the highest performing teams and brokerages in the country. They sell thousands of homes a year. They have very elaborate, fancy auto-populating dashboards. And that's cool. And I love that. I don't dislike that. This dashboard though, is something I've just used forever. So I like to teach with it. So if we take a look at this dashboard, here's what one kind of looks like. This is a team dashboard, you know, and then, you know, we've got lead measures or in my book, I refer to them as activity-based indicators, right? And they're, they're ways that we actually focus on specific activities that are geared towards us getting the results we want, right? And in this case, we have this team and these are the members of the team and they're all going to make regular contacts to their sphere of influence, people that they know in their SOI database, um, so it's people they've met before, people they know, people that would recognize them by name, and they've all agreed upon a certain number of weekly contacts to reach out to them to somehow add value and come from contribution. And then they actually report those contacts each week. And then when they meet each week, they talk about how they did and how good they are doing and staying in front of the members of their SOI. And then the next lead gen, and this is, you know, every team has different activity-based indicators. They may also be growing their sphere of influence by growing the number of people that are in it. Like someone has 200 people in their SOI, they might have a goal to grow it to 300 by the end of the year. So they might try to meet and add two people per week to their SOI database so that they go from 200 to 300 people in their SOI per year. So they actually commit to certain numbers of people they're going to add to their database per week. Then they, this team has a goal to hold a certain number of open houses per week, per person. You know, they could be trying to follow up with online leads that they've got coming in. 
So they have a certain number of tasks they have to do in their action campaigns and their CRM. So they've got to make sure that there, there are no outstanding tasks at the end of every single week. So they've done all their follow-ups and all their nurture contacts with every lead that comes in. They have to do a certain amount of online lead contacts. They got to keep their response time to, for, to, to every single on, incoming on, online lead to five minutes or less. And here, the leaders of the team actually have to do recruiting appointments. Again, every team is different. And you'll see this in the book as well, too. There's tons of different ways to generate business. I've got teams that do expired listing contacts, FISBO, seller contacts, farming contacts, social media posts, blog content written. You can go all over the map. There's so many. I mean, I could take an entire hour just listing the amount of lead generation activities you can do that are effective activity-based indicators to help you generate more business. But the point of the matter is they need to be listed on your team's dashboard and you need to have pre-agreed upon amounts of contacts or actions or activity-based indicators that members of your team are going to hit, right? So that's the key is have them up on that dashboard, okay? Uh, Sarah asked, are the smaller SOI contacts and their direct correlation with more online lead contacts due to having smaller SOO? I don't know what SOO is. So maybe put that, I think it could be a typo. It could be SOI. Oh, sorry. SOI. Okay. Got it. So yeah. So um, the smaller SOI contacts, yeah, may, maybe it is. I mean, it could, I, that's, I mean, I just made up these numbers because this is not a real, a real uh, scoreboard. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can only have people make so many contacts. So, you know, making five SOI contacts a day, you know, is quite a bit. I mean, because those are longer conversations. Those are people you know. So, I mean, online lead contacts, half the times, those are just people you don't know. I mean, all the time, there are people you don't know. So you're just hanging up. You're just getting people hanging up on you, you know, all the time. So those are quick calls. It's like, hey, how you doing? I'm not interested. Click. Well, there's one contact because we talked to somebody that counts as a contact. Whereas your SOI, it's how you been, how are the kids, blah, blah, blah. It just takes a lot more time, right? But yes, I mean, there could also be a direct correlation because you, depending on how many leads you're getting per month, you're getting a lot of leads, you may have to cut down on the SOI contacts. But I will say this, of all the different contacts that are most important, SOI is the first and foremost, most important thing. So don't ever, ever, ever have a team that does not encourage its agents to build their own database, their own book of business from the people they know. You always need a referral database, an SOI referral database. That is the underlying, that is the bulk of the business. That is the part that will never be replaced in real estate. And that is all the top teams get the vast majority of their business from an SOI. Always, all the top agents do, all the top teams do. That is, I mean, I, I know there's all these bright and shiny shortcuts people try to chase, but what the top teams know is, you know, you want to build that book of business first and foremost, and no one worth their salt in real estate is going to argue that one. That is for sure. Okay. Um, that is for sure. And yes, I see on here, we include Facebook. That's a great ABI. Is maybe they have to do a certain amount of posts. Maybe they have to interact with other people's posts. Like Christine, you know, was talking about how they do the 5510. That's something we teach to our clients at ICC that they, uh, or I think it's the 10105, where we, you know, we, uh, you know, comment on 10 posts. We like 10 posts and then we do five post shares or five post interactions. That's great. So we don't even post at all. We're just interacting there. Or we could be saying they have to do one Facebook live a week, or they're doing something to get out in front of their people to keep that mind share. That's different social media content that we're writing, creating, and posting. That's great too. Those are all different activity-based indicators. Okay. So there's an endless amount of activity-based indicators out there. There are so many ways to lead generate for business. So many different ways. Um, and most agents, frankly, do none. And most agents on teams, frankly, do none, which is why we have to have a dashboard and we have to have agreed upon activity-based indicators and we have to meet every single week. That accountability, that group culture that comes from being on a team is the biggest value to agents of having a team. So if you don't do it, and now agents won't tell you that, they'll say, I want to be on the team for leads or or that's usually leads. I just want your leads, right? That's a follower mentality, you know, unfortunately. They just want the money. They just want the business. They're not leaders yet. You know, so they just say, I want, give me money, give me money, give me money, right? They don't realize the importance of accountability, even though they haven't been able to generate enough on their own. Yes, they want your mentoring. They want your training for a while, 
for a while. That usually goes away after a short period of time. And all that's left is accountability. And no one likes accountability because it's getting people to do what they don't want to do. No one wants to be held accountable to go to the gym because they don't want, I mean, they want to go to the gym. They want the results, but they don't want to be made to go. You know, they want to go to church. They think that's important too, but they don't want to be made to actually go. They just want to get the results from having been to church, right? So you don't have to like the activities. You need to like the results. And then you need something to force yourself to do the uncomfortable activities. And that's what this weekly team meeting does and, and having a dashboard and all the accountability of the team is it actually helps agents do the uncomfortable things they don't want to do to get the results they want. And that's the key to being on it. To me, it's the most valuable thing a real estate team provides to agents. How do I know this? Well, let me tell you. I mean, I've ran some of the highest producing agents in, in the country. I are, are, excuse me, the highest real estate, sorry, real estate brokerages in the country. A lot of my brokerages, and I'm still an owner of many of them, they have 500 agents in them. And all the top performing agents were in those offices. And I can tell you, you know, when agents got into the business, there was a very small percentage of them that would actually succeed and survive. A very small percentage. Most agents would die on the vine and they would die on the vine because not because they didn't know what to do. They learned what to do. They, because when they come into the business, they're all bright eyed, bushy tail. They just tell me what to do. I want to know. I want to know. So that first six months, maybe even a year of the business, they're learning everything. They're attending classes. They're talking to mentors. They're absorbing like a sponge. They get knowledge. Knowledge is not king in real estate. Knowledge is just, you know, usually an excuse. Once they know, then they, then they say, I already know that. I mean, they didn't do anything with it, but they already know it. Everybody knows you should get your SOI together or do one of the many things you could do to generate business in real estate. And then they they may start doing it. They may not. But the hard part is keeping doing it. Stay in activity, especially when you get a few clients. Usually you quit. You, know, you just work on the clients and you forget to keep trying to generate new business, right? That's where the team's value. And that's where the dashboard, that's where the scoreboard come in. It's the most important thing that's missing. So I saw that agents, when they came into my brokerages, if they went on teams, they survived, they, they succeeded at a much higher rate. I would say about 50 to 60% of agents that went on teams survived, which is a great number. That's a great number. The agents that survived in real estate that went on their own was less than 10%. I mean, most of them didn't make it. They really didn't. I mean, 33% of agents quit the National Association of Realtors within one year. 87% don't make it five years. Those are the national numbers. And they've been that way for decades. So agents just die on the vine. Why? It's not because they don't know what to do. It's because they can't generate any business. Why don't they generate any business? Because they don't do those activity-based indicators to get business. They've got a thousand excuses. Being on a team with a dashboard where you're held accountable actually alleviates and removes all those excuses. See what I'm saying? So that's the key. So these little simple things make all the difference in the world. Why agents don't acknowledge that they need this? I don't know. The ones that do are pretty self-aware and they tend to succeed and get a lot higher. They get humble. They get humble with an industry that has one of the highest failure rates in the history of professional businesses. You know. All right. So let's get back to my dashboard because I still haven't shown you the cool stuff. Then we have like conversion measures on here as well too. Okay. So I just showed you the activity-based indicators at the top. Then conversion measures, we might check, we might track the amount of listing appointments set, the amount of listing appointments had, the amount of listing agreements signed. We might track the amount of buyer appointments set, buyer appointments had, buyer point by agreement signed, and then contracts ultimately written. Why do we do this? It's accountability here. And it also, you know, it helps us diagnose problems. I mean, if someone's setting a lot of buyer appointments but they're not having them. They're setting weak appointments that people aren't showing up for. So what are you saying on the phone if you're setting a lot of appointments, but you're not having a lot of appointments? We can actually diagnose and work on scripts, you know? Or if we're setting a lot of appointments and having a lot of appointments, but no one's signing our buyer agency agreements, uh-oh, what are we saying in that appointment so that people aren't agreeing to go into business with us? Are we setting bad expectations? What's happening with our presentation? And then if we're getting a lot of clients to come to our appointments and agree to work with us, but we're not writing contracts, where are we going wrong? Are we, you know, how are we not keeping our buyers engaged? I mean, this is probably the biggest problem a lot of buyers agents are having in this new world. And that problem is, you know, there's not a lot of inventory. So our buyers, we're getting buyer fatigue and that's a big, big problem. So that buyer fatigue, you know, we lose track. So what are we doing to stay on top of our buyers? What are we doing to stay in front of them? What are we, what are we doing to constantly engage them and constantly encourage them to keep looking or maybe even write more, you know, stronger offers? Are we making sure they're learning from their missed offers? You know, things like that. Um, and those conversations actually come up 
in weekly team meetings when we talk about uh, activity-based indicators and conversion measures on a scoreboard like this. We see the problem. We say, what do we do to keep these guys engaged? You know, and we can start sharing our best practices. I mean, you can't have a more engaging real estate team meeting when we're diagnosing problems on a scoreboard and then turning around and, you know, talking about best practices and solutions to overcome those problems. Pretty fantastic stuff, really, you know. 